Hello everybody, I am Professor Dr. A. K. M. Fazlul Haq, Head, Department of Electronics and Telecommunication Engineering, Daffodil International University. Today, I am going to talk about the session from my course Computer Networks and the sessions I am going to discuss about RIP routing information protocols. In these uh, sessions, I will have some descriptions about these routing protocols, the feature of these routing protocols, the characteristics of these routing protocols, the advantages and drawbacks of these routing protocols, the limitation of these routing protocols. So, first, what is RIP? Of course, RIP, the elaborations of the RIP means routing information protocols and it is a routing protocol and distance vector routing protocols. So, this routing protocols is used to exchange the routing table from one router to other routers. And this before this going to these descriptions, uh, again I will have some short description about the routing protocols. So, as earlier I said to discover the remote networks, routing protocol is used and there are some very well known routing protocols, RIP routing information protocol is one of them. So, the background of routing protocols, the routing protocols information, routing information protocols, there are some history, the when it is created, what is the purpose and uh, what is the matrix of these routing protocols. Of course, I will have also description later what is the minimum hop, what is the metric of this routing protocols, how it is uh, calculated, the table, routing table, how the information is being transmitted. During the transmissions, what kind of problems can be arised, how can we solve the problems. This is the main concern of this routing protocols. Purpose of uh, routing information protocols. Uh, the purpose uh, actually from this figure if we see, uh, also I explained before that of course, uh, main concern is to exchange the informations to discover the remote networks. And this routing protocols has uh, some simple and it uh, can you can configure very easily in the routers and uh, you can exchange the information, it can update the informations it can make the routing tables and uh, it is flexible and uh, uh, it can um, it can be used uh, in different uh, routing protocols also uh, in different routing devices also and uh, of course there uh, is no formal distinction between networks and hubs and uh, there are some other parameters also i'll have some uh, descriptions later RIP characteristics, first uh, we can see it is classful distance vector routing protocol. So, classful it is a word, but it is a very big meaning in broad sense. So, first we have to understand here what is classful and what is classless. The classful means uh, in subnet section previously described that a IP address is, has some fixed network portions and host portions. So, if the IP addresses carries the CID annotation portions, the default network parts, this is classful and if we subnet the network or the network portions or the number of bits of the network portions is more or less than the default class, so this is classless. So, if we want to configure this routing protocols, routing information protocols in a topology, we must uh, or that we have to put the network addresses with classful addresses. Classless we cannot consider for the version 1. We will have also a short description later, there are two types of if version 1 and if version 2. And also here uh, we can see here we have to use hop and we have to the if use hop, hop count to measure as matrix to measure the destination networks. Hop is measured as, as matrix and minimum hop is 15 because 
when the information updates from one router to router, default it was 0, when it followed it to other router, the 1 is added. So, that means in this way, when number of forwarding packets from one router to one router this way, many router is travels. So, how many travels, how many hops will be validity, how, how many hops will be counted as a legal that means, it is 15. If it is more than 15, it is infinite. So, it will not be considered here and updates and broadcasts up to 30 seconds. So, that means, it preordered updates. The interesting things here, RIP updates the information after 30 seconds default and it is periodic update. That means, if there is change in the uh, link or no change, but it updates the information after 30 seconds broadcast informations and multiple stability features also. So, this is the actually RIP characteristics. And of course, there are two versions of RIP, RIP version 1 and RIP version 2 and there are some um, limitations also. I previously I said the RIP version 1 some have some special features. RIP version 2 also have some informations. The question is arised here, suppose there are two consecutive routers, there are two adjacent routers. In one router if we configure RIP version 1 and one router if we configure RIP version 2. So, what is the status of packet tracing? Yes, RIP version 2 can send and receive the information from RIP version 1, but RIP version 1 can send the information, but he cannot receive the information from RIP version 2. So, that means, if you configure the consecutive or the adjacent routers, of course, either you have to configure RIP version 1 both or you have to configure RIP version 2 both. So, this is the difference. And of course, there are other limitations because RIP version 1 has some problems in the topology. If you want to see that, so no, I will not configure other routing protocols, but in this sense, if it is possible, you can configure if version 2 and you can remedy the situation if suppose class full or classless or other problems, so we can solve using if version 2. So, this is the basic difference between if version 1 and if version 2. Also, uh, there are some parameters based differences, I will explain later. So, uh, in the written here, there are some differences here, suppose here the RIP version 1 supports classful addresses, where RIP version 2 supports classless and classful addresses. That means, CID and notation the for RIP version IP addressing and for, for subnetting I explained, CID means classless interdomain routing and again and again I am defining which is very important. So, class VLSM also my last sessions may be some couple of before sessions I had the explanation about VLSM. So, that means, if you if we configure RIP version 1 and if the networks subnetted networks or it is VLSM, RIP version 1 cannot support this whereas, RIP version 2 can support. And there is a auto summary, this is very important. The last class also I had the explanation how can we build a auto summary, what is the necessity of auto summary, why auto summary is needed, what is the advantages of auto summary, what is the drawbacks of auto summary it was explained. So, if we configure or if in the RIP version 1 automatic summary is in effect. So, if the problem arised uh, in auto summary for RIP version 1, but manually we cannot change, we cannot make no auto summary. But in RIP version 2, if, it, if you think that I, in RIP version 1 auto summary is creates problem, if it is happened in the topology, that time we can configure RIP version 2. Why? Because RIP version 2 can remove the auto summary manually. So, if you write in the CLI command no auto summary, easily we can remove the auto summary. So, the, this problem if this type of problem happens in the topology, instead of RIP version 1, we can configure RIP version 2. And 
routing updates, there are some updates, uh, broadcast and there is a multicast. Um, this type of updates also, uh, there are some changing, there are some differences between if version 1 and if version 2. The similarities of RIP version 1 and RIP version 2 actually prevent routing loops and there are some uh, split horizon, poison, there are some problems, 15 hops. The poison and split horizon if I say, what is split horizon? Because I said router RIP updates the information to adjacent router. Again this router updates his adjacent routers. If I send the informations, but the question is here, what kind of information updates? Router 1 RIP updates only those information except what it receives. So that means, I am sending the information or I am receiving some information from my, my neighbors, from some adjacent routers. The router are not sending the same information to the adjacent routers because it is already received. So, it is splitted. So, this is called a split horizon. So, these problems arise for both for RIP version 1 and RIP version 2. And 15 offs also I said the matrix, this is also considered for RIP version 1, RIP version 2. And this 15 offs, it is more than 15, 16 will not be considered and it is automatically reduced or automatically deleted. It will be deleted from the routing table. So, these parameters can be considered for both RIP version 1 and RIP version 2. This is the similarities of RIP version 1 and RIP version 2. And the features in this figure if we say these figures there are some routers or some different networks here inside the RIP version 1 that means it says that this routing protocols is used in this topology to discover the destination networks. So, first the network designer or network administrator will have to think what is the demand of the users, what is the demand of the topologies. If these topologies fulfill the demands of the network, then only network administrator will install these routing protocols. So, because previously I said these routing protocols have some advantages and also some drawbacks. So, with ambiguity, if you install this routing protocol in topology, so maximum performance or maximum benefits are not will be extracted, will not be extracted from this topology. So, the network designer will have to think very carefully which routing should be preferable for this routing topology. RIP version 1's uh, limitations also I explained that these topologies, there are some topologies here you can see. These topologies here some static root also, there are some here configured here some networks here and the between these consecutive routers, the classless routing, classless addresses is used here. The problem is look the left side there are some boundaries, right side there are some two boundaries. In this figure if we say the one two class pool boundaries are separated by classless boundaries. This type of network is called discontiguous network. I repeat when two class pool boundaries are separated by classless network, this network is called discontiguous networks. So, the question is arised here. Look very carefully in this topology in this figure. If we install RIP version 1, what kind of problem can be arised here? Because look here, first things no updates here because CIDR classless interdomain routing, CIDR classless network is used here. So, if we configure RIP version 1 from the remote network, no packets will be transferred from one network to remote networks. What are the solutions? First solution is we have to configure here RIP version 2. Even if we configure RIP version 2, maybe we can find out some remote networks from here CID and notation. But the from the left side, the right side, what will be the problem here? Even 
after configuring reversion to. As I said, the discontinuous network is here. The problem is, you can consider here from the left side, suppose some networks are going from the left sides. Maybe the auto summary is same. From the right side also is same auto summary network is coming here. When the middle router will ping the network from the left side, it will ping the auto summary. So, a split horizon says it will not save the information when it comes the same information from the adjacent routers. So, this middle router will sense the packet from both sides 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, what our expectation? Our expectation is 100 percent percent recipient, not 50 50 percent. If 100 percent packet tracing is not happened, so that properly it is it does not make sense. So, that means there is some still problem. Problem is who is the responsible of this problem? Auto summary. But first it was installed reversion 1. Manually you could not change this auto summary. No auto summary is not possible. Now you have installed reversion 2. Now if you make a no auto summary, there will not be no auto summary updates. Individually network will be updated. So, now from the left side networks can be accessed from by other networks. So, this is the limitation of RIP version 1. RIP version 1 cannot solve this problem. Instead, if you further if you not install RIP version 2. This is the also from this topology, if we configure using packet tracer, if we configure RIP version 1, RIP version 2, if we trace the packets from the analyzer, from the simulations. Clearly, the difference between these two consecutive routers, the performance, the parameter says what is the drawbacks of reversion 1 and what is the advantage of reversion 2 from here. It's clearly, it is extracted from this topology. Also, I explained here the reversion 1 limitations also there are some fields here you can see in the, in the figure and also the table there are some limitations. Also, uh, I, I do not explain the redundant things here because uh, there are some text, there are some uh, topics here discussed here from the you can if you have if you want to know the details about uh, these topics, you can go to textbooks or reference book or from the internet sites, you can have the detailed explanation there. Uh, I will have the suggestions from here, if you go the Cisco manual CCN 1 or 2 they are very uh, surprisingly there are explanations, details there. And I will suggest one thing, when you will read, when you will un try to understand, you, you please make some topologies from the uh, design, from the CLI command. Make using the packet tracer software, make packet tracer, make command and apply these things, apply what you are understanding, then you will have the clear concentration. Look here in this uh, slides here, there is this topology, how it is configured. In RIP version 1, router RIP, the command line says first we have to configure router, router RIP, then from here the connected routers also we have to configure. Static routing it is also, default static routing you, you can also consider here. In this topology also you can have the decision which routing should be preferable. It is it should be static or it should be dynamic routings. Because look here, there are one path. If you go to ISP routers from here, if it is one way, it is a stub network. So, you can also consider a static routing. And if you install here middle side one router here, if you make here more configurations here, if you make here more routers here, that is why multiple path is arised here, that is why dynamic routing protocols can be considered here. In this here the uh, very uh, nice configuration I, as I already said the uh, uh, VLSM it is not supported by RIP version 1 and VLSM is of course supported by RIP version 2 and the summarize the roots class full boundary here. Now, of course, the boundary should be class full, there is some limitations classless boundaries not be possible, not be configured by version 1. This also 
um, I explained earlier before the no CIDR classless interdoming not be considered here. The region is do not support class four routing protocol do not support CIDR notation very clearly you can see here. Class pool routing protocol do not support CIDR because RIP version 1 100 percent class pool routing protocol. So, there is no provision. So, when the network administrator or network designer will make the total routings or IP, or IP addressing or subnetting before installing routing protocol, he or she must look which routing should be uh, protocol should be preferable RIP version 1 or RIP version 2. If it is class pool boundary and if, if demand is fulfilled, so easily we can configure RIP version 1. But the topology or IP addressing CIDR, of course, we have to install RIP version 2. And RIP version 2 features uh, distance vector routing protocol, this uh, hold down timers also 3 times of the 60 seconds, uh, that means 180 seconds split horizons to prevent routing loops uh, because it is explained that why do you need actually split horizons actually to prevent loops there is some possibilities of loops because I said 16 more than 16 hops sometimes it happens if in the topology if it just bouncing the routing updates from one router to another router and um, if it is not prohibited by some routers unambiguously or it is clearly it is it will extend from 16, 17, 18 and there is no stopping. So, it is infinite loop. So, this split horizon can prevent this uh, informal loops from the topology. So, this is the very good features of reversion to in this regard. And also there are some format of uh, this uh, re message format, this command field version field and this some 0 also considered IP addresses matrix also here for if version uh, message format because it is a message and every routing protocol message have, have some special features special format of the packet. And RIP operations request message response message and RIP enabled interface and uh, there are some neighbors and it actually send the information to the neighbors. There is some maybe confusion can be arised here. You can think that it is directly actually send the information from one router to remote networks router? No. Only one router sends the updates to the adjacent routers and this router makes the table with some metric and this routers information also sending the, the his associated routers. So, in this way one router's information is going to other router's table. RIP operations, as I previously said, the IP addresses, there are some classes, class A, class B and class C. And also I will not explain details here because I had some detailed explanation about, about the class of IP addresses. So, because it is needed here, it is RIP is, RIP is the matter, RIP version 1 and RIP version 2 is the matter. Although uh, it is uh, classful and classless, that is why some reminding here which class is belongs to this routing protocol. That is why class A, class B and class C informations, it is little bit uh, try to understand from again. So, uh, if you have some confusion again class A, class B and class C, just go to your pre previous lesson and go there and you must have clear understanding from my IP addressing and subnetting class. So, from there you can have the clear concentration. And comparing uh, RIP version 1, RIP version 1 to message formats almost is same. There are two differences here. First extension subnet mask, second extension is the next of addresses. So, from here you can easily find out almost class A uh, the RIP version 1 and RIP version 2 are same, but there are two differences in the message format. Administrative uh, distance of RIP version 1, uh, the RIP version I said the, the administrative distance the 120, uh, the RIP uh, 110 also uh, for OSPF and also I explained what is administrative distance because at the same destination networks if two routing protocols are there which routing should protocol should be get preferable. Of course, the uh, administrative distance value. Here the interesting thing is the less value will get highest priority. So, as I said if RIP version 1 and EIGRP 
have been considered to extract the remote network address, of course EIGRP will be considered because the less value, the less value has priority. As I said, administrative distance does prioritize the routing. So, less value will get most highest priority. And reversion to and CIDR, uh, again I will explain little bit here, reversion to CIDR classless interdomain routing here. And uh, in this figure here, if you see, if you give some commands here, show IP route, show IP protocols brief, show IP RIP and informations. If you give the common debug and you will see how the information is going sent. The interesting thing is here, in practical things, if you have two computers parallelly, you cannot see what kind of information is being exchanged here. But in the analyzer, if you have packet tracer software, which, which kind of information, what kind of packets, what kind of frames, which field, what is interruption, everything you can, uh, can be, it is can be viewed from this topology. But in the practical, you can just copy paste making file transfer, you cannot see more than this. What kind of problem is arised, you cannot see. But in this topology, if you give the commands, very clearly you are understanding what is happening. If it is, th if you think that I need some changes manually, the network administrator can solve this problem. If you in trouble, okay, so you can easily troubleshoot the, pro the if you arise, there are some problems is arised here, very easily you can solve this problem. So, so before understanding, before troubleshooting, of course, students, you will have to know the details from this topology. If you are uh, try to learn this, if you are, if you gather the knowledge from here, I hope you will understand, you will solve the problem from very easily from here. So, how can we verify this? The reversion to show IP route, this very important troubleshoot command. So, very, very popular command, if I, if you write IP show IP route, as, as I said, what is the main concentration, what is the main regions of routing protocols? to discover the remote networks. So, if packet is not traced, if you think everything is done but packet is not going, what you will do? First you will write IP show IP route. This command will extract or will show the all networks. If you think if all network is not there, that means I am thinking yes, there is some problems. Then manually every host, every networking devices, every computers you have to go and you have to check manually then you can solve the problem. Troubleshoot I said again what kind of problem may be arised or can be arised from the topology and if you find out suppose there is no interface, there is no network, there is no IP configurations, packet is not going, there is no latency, there is no delay or something, there is many problems is there and you have to understand which kind of problem and what is the parallel solutions also you have to know from this and of course reversion to from here you can find out the problems. And also troubleshooting, uh, I said if you think is it, is it true that some updates is going from one router to other routers, yes. If you write the debug IP RIP, you will see in the analyzer some informations are updating from one place to another places. Okay. From here also you can have decision, yes appropriately some in information is updating or not. Of course, from the, this command and after that you can make undebug all. If you make undebug, so no updates will can see, but in the virtually information is being updated. So, thank you very much from this sessions. I will have next time I will have brief descriptions. I have last in my advice is, so you have the laptops, you have computers, you have packet tracer softwares from the every slide in this uh, here uh, previously I explained, you can draw these slides, you can apply this topology and you can have the decisions and you can, you will get the very good understanding about reversion and reversion too. Thank you very much.